Hello, and welcome to the Best Elder's Night build, uh, in my opinion, part one. Um, today we're going to be going over everything to level five um, for an Elder's Night, which is the reason for level five is because we'll be doing these in five, 10, 15, and 20 increments. And usually campaigns end around an odd number. And this is better than doing the tier system, at least in my opinion. Uh, standard setup here, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the fixed HP and everything else doesn't really matter. So what we're gonna start with is which race should you pick? There are several options here. Uh, I'm not gonna say any of them are bad, but the best option, in my opinion, is to do a custom lineage. Now the reason for this is simple. You get an ASI increase of two on one ability, and you get a feat, and you get dark vision. These are all incredibly amazing features to have. So that's what we're going to do. Your size, I usually pick medium, medium is good. Now, the ASI we're going to do here is two to dex, and we're going with a dex build. Now the reason we go for a dex build is because you can use ranged weapons and you can use your melee weapons at the same, around the same level. This is in contrast with strength. For strength, you basically have melee weapons only, and that is it. Um, for your feet, what we're gonna take is sharpshooter. Now the reason we're gonna take sharpshooter is because of the uh, plus 10 of damage and the increase in longbow range from 150 to 600 without penalty. Um, and then you can ignore half a three quarters cover. Now the reason this is good is because range combat in D&D is far superior to melee combat. And the main reason, which we'll get into, is you get a, a fighter gets a plus two style. And that one equals a archery one, which you can take, which gives you a plus two. And you can have a 10% increase in your chance to hit. But we'll get to that later, but you take sharpshooter here. Variable trait, you take dark vision. The reason you take dark vision is dark vision is amazing and just can be stacked with uh, another magic item, which will give you an 120 feet of dark vision, which is very good. Your language, your language can be whatever you want. It depends on the campaign you're playing on. I go elvish, you can go draconic, it completely depends on the campaign. Now, our class, we're going to select here is fighter, obviously. And we're going to do five levels of fighter. Uh, this is standard for this. Our proficiencies. But we should pick up fighter um, are going to be acrobatics and perception. Acrobatics allows you to get out of situations in which you need to roll an acrobatics roll, which is determined by the DM. But this is basically your quote unquote athletic skill. Your fighting style, your fighting style is going to be archery. Archery is the best fighting style in the game, hands down. And because it adds a 10% bonus to every single weapon attack that you can make with a ranged weapon. We get a second one, action surge, and our martial archetype will be obviously Elder's Knight. We get spell casting and we get weapon bond. Weapon bond is useful if you want to bond your weapon to a rapier and your longbow, then you're good to go. And our ASI here, we're going at level four, we're going to go with constitution and dex. And the reason we do this is because we can get our dex up to 18 now. Um, sorry, not constitution, charisma. Because so we can get our uh, dex up to 18 and our charisma up to 14. We will not show that. And the main reason we stick to, stick to level 5 on the Eldritch Knight is because of the 5th level extra attack, which increases your damage output by 100%. Okay. With that out of the way, we're going to go with ASIs, and we're going to go with our background, and then we will go over spells. ASI is usually standard array in all the games I play. So a standard array build for this will be of 8 strength, 15 dex, 10 constitution, there's a reason for this, 14 intelligence, um, 13 Charisma and 12 Wisdom. Now the reason the build is like this is because there is a magic item that allows you to, one, increase your constitution to 19. There's also another magic item that allows you to increase your intelligence to 19 if you wish to do so. And rounding out your abilities um, from your ASI at fourth level allows you to get 18 and 14 and, and two 14s in total. Uh, now we go to the description. For this, we're going to choose custom background because it is the easiest um, way to do it and we're going to choose the outlander for the characteristic style now, the reason we do this is because the wanderer feature is extremely good for it is basically one of the best backgrounds you can possibly have basically allowing you to survive in the wilderness now the reason we do this is we get another two proficiencies again you can sit here and uh, try other class backgrounds it's up to you um, the next one is persuasion and sleight of hand reason we pick Persuasion and Sleight of Hand. Sleight of Hand, there is an item that can boost it by five and it will be incredible. And this is the dex build, so you have very good uh, Sleight of Hand and Persuasion. Persuasion is usually used in almost every Charisma circumstance and it is one of the better skills in the game. 
Now two proficiencies, usually I will go with Thieves Tools. And the reason for Thieves Tools is more or less your dex build, so you can unlock things. And adding your proficiency modifier to it is very good. And your last one, it completely depends upon what you want to do with your campaign. One of the campaigns I have played, I took smithing tools and I was able to start making custom weapons and armor. Now, with that, we're going to go to spells. If you add spells, these are the these are the cantrips I would take, okay? Cantrips would be message and mage hand. The reason for these is very simple. Message allows you to whisper um, messages to you, your allies in a non um, overt way, which is useful for a variety of reasons in D&D. Um, maybe your party members are out of range of you to yell, or you want to keep it quiet, or you just tell the mission. It's very useful. And the next one is Mage Hand. Mage Hand is, again, very useful in a variety of circumstances. You can push doors open, you can check for traps, you can push things. Um, there's a variety of reasons. Now, some other cantrips that you could possibly take, if you did not want to take these two, would be Chill Touch, and the reason, the reason we take Chill Touch is because it stops the regeneration of health against enemies. Now, you are mainly going to be using your bow and, if needed, your melee weapon. So having a damaging cantrip is not necessarily a very good idea. But if you wanted to have an ability to damage or stop regenerating uh, enemies, this is a good one to have. The next one is for Predigestation, if I can say it correctly. This is useful for a variety of things. Um, you can walk yourself off to battle. You can make a smell, an odor. There's a variety of things you can do. There's some uh, other guys that make just completely dedicated to Predigestation and what you can do with it. It's a very good spell. Another one that I would possibly take if I had more options would be Minor Illusion. Creating a minor illusion of things is very useful in a variety of circumstances. Campaign I just recently uh, was recently a part of. I used minor illusion to uh, make it seem like a enemy uh, elf was uh, shooting at some gnolls, and the gnolls got spooked and tried to go investigate it. And this is very good to uh, lure enemies out and do, make them do other things you want them to do, or get away from a trap, or get away from what they were observing. Okay, now for level one spells. The standard ones that we should get is Absorb Elements. And the reason we get Absorb Elements is basically it lets you have resistance to the magic that is being done to you, which is a variety, which is good in almost every single situation. If you're going to get hit with a spell and you know it's fire, you can have resistance to fire. This is very good. And if you're somehow in melee range when this happens, you can again attack and get uh, extra damage, a 1d6 on it. The next one is Find Familiar. Find Familiar is very useful. Find Familiar can do a variety of things for you. Uh, way too much to go in depth on this video, but basically um, in combat, your Familiar can give you a help action, which gives you advantage on basically every shot, every single time for every round of combat your character can go on. This is very good, along with absolutely everything else that Familiar can do, which is one of the best spells in D&D. Always take this. The next one we will get is False Life reason we take false life is it adds a 1d4 plus 4 temporary hit points and especially at level 5 this is massive this gives you a massive health increase and again it always upscales if you had higher spell levels and the last one we will take a shield shield is very good it's one of the best spells in the game for reaction you have a plus 5 to ac whenever an attack comes at you and this can increase your ac by 5 and you can take no damage from it this is a very good spell now there are some other spells that you could possibly take instead of these. Um, one of them would be uh, Mage Armor. So Mage Armor increases, let me uh, pull it up. Uh, basically, Mage Armor increases your AC to 13 plus your Dex modifier. And what this allows you to do is have a 18 um, AC. Here it is right here. So you have a 18 AC uh, if you had max Dex modifier good but the requirement cost is a first level spell and is not a ritual that you can cast which um, demerits its uh, usefulness along with those four other great spells the next one is long strider now 
the reason you may take a long strider is if you're having trouble um, catching people or they're running away in your campaign. If you can take a long strider, it increases your movement speed by 10, which the only other thing that can possibly do that is mobile, which increases your speed by 10. And again, if you start stacking these modifiers, you can, along with haste, you can get some ridiculous speeds going. This is a self-buff spell, and I'm very advocating of self-buffing in the Eldritch Knight sort of damage dealing. Um, so with those spells out of the way, so we will have Absorb Elements, Find Familiar, uh, False Life, and Shield. So Absorb Elements, False Life, Find Familiar, and Shield to start with. Now we have done our background, and now the last thing we have to do is choose our equipment. This is standard. Um, you choose Leather Armor and a Longbow. Then choose a martial weapon and a shield. You go with a rapier. Reason is, if you have a shield and you have a rapier, you can defend yourself in melee combat as well as anyone else. Um, these other choices are up to you. Honestly, it does not matter. Two hand axes is good, and then the engineering pack is probably the better one because you get a crowbar. So now we're going to go look at this character that we have. So now, here, uh, we're going to equip all of the items that we get standard. So now, at level 5, we have 17 AC, a 4 initiative roll, an 18 dex, a 12, 14 intelligence, and a 14 charisma. This is a very good build, one of the best, in my opinion, that you can possibly have for this level. Again, you also have 3 spell slots. Remember, you only need to summon a familiar once a day, so you basically have 3 spell slots that you can use in combat, depending on what you're doing. False life is one of them, so if you want to uh, buff yourself before, before fight, get a 1d4 plus 4. So if we just roll it right here, you get an extra 5 HP. Which 5 HP at this level will get you a 39, which is a significant increase. Um, and we also see here that our uh, weapon attacks um, do what they say they will do. So our archery one is giving us a plus 2 to our longbow, which gives us a plus 9 to hit. A plus 9 to hit at level 5 is very good. Um, if you use the sharpshooter feature, it will drop it down to a plus four, which isn't very good. Um, but this is, again, why you teach the archery feat. And you can get this number to ridiculous levels. Um, if you get a plus one longbow and a plus one arrow, and you stay at this level, you can get it to a plus 11 to hit. And then that would be a plus six if you used your sharpshooter feature. And your rapier is a plus seven, which isn't bad. Um, it's not amazing either, but it's uh, good at this level, and it is a good uh, backup, especially when you can whip out a shield to deal with uh, any enemies that get close to you. Now, the skills are a little, leave a little bit left to be desired. Um, most, of, Pretty much every single campaign I have, I have been in or ran or done allows players to uh, acquire more proficiencies in different skills. If your DM doesn't allow this, then this build is... Uh, is very good, um, but you're going to be lacking in a few key areas. Um, so one of the first proficiencies I would get would be stealth to increase your rec uh, proficiency here, which would get it to a seven. And then if you have some other magic items that can give you an advantage on this roll, it's very good. And then your sleight of hands, if you get gloves um, of thievery, gives you a excellent um, plus five to this, which is kind of insane when you think about it, because your minimum roll would be uh, 12. 12, a 12 plus, and then if you roll a 1, it would be a 13, which is very good. And your persuasion is okay at a plus 5, and your perception is an okay at plus 4, and then your dex modifier is okay at plus 7. Now, <clears throat> um, we're going to go over some magic items to try to acquire... Um, at level 5 or around here, you may not get any of these, you may get some, um, but we'll not go over them. So, um, these are not in order of importance or anything, but we're going to start with the ones that do not require attunement. So, Sentinel Shield. Sentinel Shield gives you advantage on perception checks, and it also gives you advantage on initiative rolls. So... I will add it to the inventory here, and I, it will show you exactly what it does. So here, if you equip a Sentinel Shield, you get advantage on all initiative rolls and advantage on perception. Now, if once you have advantage on perception, you can push your passive perception to 19 instead of 14, which is very, very good. 
and you have advantage on initiative rolls, which is very good for a dex build. The next one we will add, or you want to try to acquire around the time, um, Gloves of Thievery. Gloves of Thievery allow you to get the uh, plus five to your sleight of hand. Very, very good item. Let's just roll one right now. But that roll is a 29. That is a 29 on the sleight of hand check. This is very, very good. Um, to be able to steal things, open doors, unlock things, variety of reasons. Um, another item you want to try to acquire would be Goggles of Night. And if you add it here, what it's going to do is pass your dark vision. It's going to double it to a dark vision of 120 feet. This is good again for a variety of reasons, but the main one is being able to fight in, in the dark. Another item that is very good to try to acquire are Boots of Elven Kind. Since you're a dex build and you do not make noise, you will be able to have advantage on stealth rolls, um, which is very, very nice to have. Another item to try and get would be a Periapt of Health. What this does is prevents uh, basically disease. Paladins get this at very early levels, and it just allows you to have the same thing as them. And it's very good if you're worried or if a uh, plague is happening or one of these things. And if not, it's just a good thing to have in case your DM is trying to throw a curse or a disease of some kind at you. Um, another one to get is Eyes of Minute Seeing. Now what this does is allow you to have advantage on investigation checks. This is good, and but the reason, but it's, if you can get proficiency in investigation, um, it will be very, very good for you because you could push it up to a plus five on all investigations with plus advantage. But again, you have to acquire proficiencies and it's up to your DM if that helps as well. But otherwise, it's just a very good item to have. You get two rolls on investigation checks. Another one to try and get would be a Cloak of the Manta Ray. Now, this cloak basically allows you to have a swim speed of up to 60 feet and you can breathe underwater. Good, but not amazing. It depends on... Uh, the situations you're in, but it doesn't require attunement, so it's very good for that reason. Um, another one in that same field would be a ring of uh, water walking. A ring of water walking allows you basically to just run on the surface of water, and if you combine this with the cloak of the manta ray, you can decide if the enemies are shooting at you and then a boat. You can decide to either run across or dive into the water, and both are options. Gives you a variety of options and they don't require attunement. And the last one that I would recommend here, um, there's a, a lot of items you can get, but this would be a little one you could uh, probably easily acquire. An ever smoking bottle, basically a smoke grenade. You tuck this, you can run away. You can create a smoke screen. There's a variety of reasons you could want to do this. The enemies would have disadvantage on you. They can't see you. A lot of reasons. So basically a smoke grenade. Okay, now we will go into attunement items. So one of the most uh, items you should probably try and get immediately would be Braces of Archery. What this does is it gives you proficiency in Longbow, which you already have that, but it gives you plus two damage rolls on all range attacks made with them. Now the reason this is good is it will push your, uh, your minimum damage on your Longbow to plus six, and if you shoot with Sharpshooter, it'll be plus 16. Now the reason it's not showing, so let me show you. So right here, it pushes it up to a 1d8 plus 6, which is more than your rapier. And this item is very good. Um, you can push it up to a plus 16 and then whatever your 1d8 is. It's a very good item to have, and you can keep it around for a very long time before you have to replace it, or you may never replace it. That is up to you. Another item to try and get that requires attunement would be a Stone of Good Luck. A Stone of Good Luck... Um, allows you to basically get a plus one on every single um, ability check, as shown right here, and a plus one to all of your saving throws. Very good, very good item. Especially at uh, this level of play, it's very good, and you can get rid of it whenever you need to, if you find a better item. Um, now, there are some other items here, but I don't know if your DM will allow them. Um, the one that they may allow would be a Cloak of Elven Kind, which allows um, you to have advantage on stealth checks, but you already have that from the Boots of Elven Kind. 
and the enemy has, uh, when you flip the hood up, has disadvantage, or basically disadvantage on their perception checks to find you. Um, it's up to you if you want to use this. You're going to be burning an attunement slot for it, so it's not necessarily one of the better items, but it is possible to at least get this one. Now, one of the items that is probably depends on your DM, um, if you get a headband of intellect, which usually if it's uncommon, they'll probably allow, it boosts your intelligence up to 19. Um, there's no real reason to do this besides you want a higher intelligence because you're not really a spellcaster, you're more of a self-buffer than anything. And the self-buff spells don't require you to roll um, a spell checks DCs on enemies, so it's kind of not really worth it, but it is an option for your third slot. Um, obviously, the last one that I would recommend, if you can somehow acquire them, um, would be Winged Boots. They are <laughs> they are basically one of the best items in D&D. Um, they're only uncommon. Basically, you can fly in combat forever because you have four hours and if you have four hours you could even traverse difficult terrain or whatever you needed to do um, with these items again you, most dms don't allow you to have wing boots for obvious reasons so yeah um this is the eldritch uh the best eldritch uh knight build in my opinion uh, at level five um i will be making more of these at uh part two will be up to level 10 part three will be up to level 15 and part four will be up to level 20. Now, usually D&D &D campaigns end around, I would say around level 10, but it goes up, it varies, level 14, 13, 12, but somewhere in those regions. Um, it's just the way the game is. Um, unless your DM is willing to do a lot of work, it, uh, it depends. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you like this content, uh, leave a comment, subscribe, uh, put in the comments if you don't like this build or you like this build or you want me to make more of these of a variety of builds it's up to you um, with that uh, take care and have a nice day